So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, students. So, we will start unit number four, which is decision analysis. And the first topic is decision analysis with given information that is prior analysis. So, So when the utility function, it has been defined and the probabilities of the various states of nature corresponding to different consequences or results have been estimated. So the analysis reduces to the calculation of the expected utilities which corresponds to different action or alternatives. So in the following, the utility is represented in a simplified manner through the cost whereby the optimal decisions now should be identified as the decision sorry, as the decisions minimizing expected cost. And this expected cost is equivalent to maximizing expected utility. Next is the decision analysis with additional information that is posterior analysis. So when additional information becomes available, the probability structure in the decision problem, it may be updated. So having updated the probability structure, the decision analysis is unchanged in comparison to the situation with given prior information. So prior and posterior is having the likelihood and prior uh, and in the case of prior, likelihood and posterior takes place simultaneously. So it's the case for prior with um, updating probability structures and this figure is the illustration of probability structures. Next in figure 3 an illustration is given of corresponding prior and posterior probability density functions together with likelihood functions. So in the first case the prior information is strong and the likelihood is weak. The first case prior information is strong and probability is weak. That is the sample size is small. So in the second case, the prior information and the likelihood are of comparable strength. And in the last case, the prior information is relatively weak in comparison to the likelihood. So to illustrate the posterior decision analysis, the water supply decision problem is taken as an example. <coughs> it is assumed that information about the capacity of the local reservoir can be estimated by the implementation of a less expensive test as well as subsequent pump tests. So it is assumed that the cost of establishing a test well is equal to one monetary unit. However, the information that has been obtained from the pump test is only indicative as a result of the difference in scale from the test well to the planned local well. So it is assumed that the pump test can provide the following different information that is the indicators regarding the capacity of the local reservoir. The capacity of the reservoirs are uh, stated below larger than the given production requirements by 5% which is larger than 105 water volume units per day less than 95% of the required water production which is less than 95 water volume units and between 95 and 105 water units. So the information from the pump test is subjected to uncertainty and the likelihood of the actual capacity of the local reservoir given the three different indications stated above. So decision analysis with unknown information that is pre-posterior analysis. Here, the decision maker has the possibility to buy additional information through an experiment before actually making the choice of action. So if the cost of this information is small in comparison to the potential value of the information, the decision maker should perform the experiment. If several different types of experiments are possible, the decision maker must choose the experiment yielding the overall largest utility. Next is the risk treatment decision problem. So having introduced the fundamental concepts of decision theory earlier, it will now be considered how this should be carried over to the principally different types of risk analysis. The simplest form of risk analysis, that is a simple evaluation of the risk associated with a given activity or decision alternative may be related directly to the prior decision analysis. So in the prior analysis, the risk is evaluated on the basis of statistical information and probabilistic modeling which is available prior to which is available prior to any decision or any activity so a posterior analysis is in the principle of the same form as in the prior analysis 
However, changes in the branching probabilities and or the consequences or results in the decision event pre-reflects the considered problem and this has been changed as an effect of risk-reducing measures or risk-mitigating measures or collection of additional information. So posterior analysis may thus be used to evaluate the effect of activities which factually have been performed or that has been already performed. For example, for assessment of existing facilities, the testing and inspection of the as-built facility would be expected to reveal many gross design and construction errors, which leads to a more accurate reliability analysis. The next topic is use of BPNs, that is Bayes Probabilistic Networks in Risk Assessment and Decision Analysis. So Bayes, uh, Bayesian Probabilistic Networks can be used at any stage of a risk analysis and may radially substitute both fall trees and event trees in logical tree analysis. Furthermore, whereas common cause or more general dependency phenomenon poses significant complications in classical fall tree analysis, which has been discussed earlier, and this is not the case with the probabilistic nets. So these nets are basically designed to facilitate the modeling of such dependencies. Finally, the Bayesian probabilistic nets provide an enormously strong tool for decision analysis, which includes prior analysis, posterior analysis, and pre-posterior analysis. In the following, the use of Bayesian nets for different purposes in risk assessment is illustrated by example, and all the examples can be calculated by using free demonstration software on Bayesian probabilistic network that is BPN, such as Hugin Light, Hugin Light, the name of the software is Hugin Light, which is downloaded from the following given link. Next example is the classical fall tree and event tree risk analysis by Bayesian probabilistic nets. So when Bayesian probabilistic nets are applied for the analysis of the reliability of systems as a substitute for fall trees and or event trees, their use follows straightforwardly from the descriptions in the foregoing. So consider a power supply system which is composed of an engine, a main fuel supply for the engine and electrical cables distributing the power to the consumers. Furthermore, as a backup, fuel support is a reserve fuel support with limited capacity that has been installed. So the power supply system fails if the consumer is cut off from the power supply. This in turn will happen if either the power supply cables fail or the engine stops. So which is assumed to occur only if the fuel supply of the engine definitely fails. So a Bayesian network is based on the system model for the power supply and is illustrated in figure 4 where in figure 4 the unconditional probabilities for the parent events and the conditional probability tables for the children events are also illustrated. So in figure 4 you can see the illustration of Bayesian networks for the power supply risk analysis having uh, being said backup fuel goes to engine and also main fuel goes to engine then this engine is connected through cables and finally the power is supplied so all probabilities are given in the network it is for simplicity assumed to be annual probabilistic in case of a bayesian network so i'll continue with the next class again at 2 pm so i want you to give your attendance now in the chat box thank you
those who have given their attendance can leave and join again at 2 p.m. Thank you.